Welcome back everybody, we today are going to play around with some magnetic rocks. Well, rocks that gave detectors a signal and we are going to try and uh, see if there was any gold. Some of them really went off. I was very interested in some of the magnetic rocks that we had that uh, had um, quartz running through it. So that's a good indicator that uh, the quartz was mixed up in there too. So. Uh, if it's a really strong signal, that's it. But we'll check all the others. There's a bit of work involved, but we'll, I'll show you the process what I do. Okay, first of all, I use my new detector here, and I just checked it again, see if there's any sound. You can probably hear that, okay? I'll check all around. So there's a form of mineralization or uh, a metal uh, associated with this. So, <clears throat> The next thing I do is I use a magnet and I check it to see how much magnetism is in. Some of these rocks really send it off and you know that it's not gold. It's more than likely to be, uh, or minerals, I must say, minerals, uh, magnetic minerals, and, and, and including gold. Um, but uh, if it's got no magnetism there, okay, it's a good indicator that could be other than uh, mineral too so we'll give this one a go and of course we've got others here that we try out like this sometimes you got to get it going again those rocks that don't make a sound i will put aside this one doesn't seem to be firing up Like it's nothing in there, so I'll put that aside and I'll get another one out. Okay. When I hear a difference in the sound, see up there, around there, not so much, but when I hear the beat get faster, I say, well, that's interesting, that's a piece I'm really interested in. Let's go and find out what that is. Could be just mineral iron magnetized or something like that but anyway we'll try if it's make uh, it's got uh, any magnetic properties slight very slight we'll still give it a go what's a rock in between friends what i mean here is rocks that are friends of mine are gold bearing. Nothing in this one. This one last night, this one last night was making a sound. But tonight, today, there we are, we found it. Okay, so it's right up on this end here. Not much of a sand, but we'll give it a go. Try to remember that I have not done this ever before. This is the first time I've ever done it. So it's a first for everything, and there's no bulldust what I am doing here. Furthermore, I could have egg on my face. Another one. Go to the end of part one to find out the reason why. Bit of crystallization here. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, that way we can. Um, so, like, like it looks like a bit of quartz in there, so that'll be interesting. We can crush it up. All right. I don't call this specimen gold, it is uh, just uh, normal uh, fine bearing, whatever it is in there. It is recording across, this one here is recording across the, recording across the surface of the uh, handheld 
and uh, nothing's turned but as soon as I put it on there it starts up nothing there so so right there it's so we're getting around to where there could be uh, some mineralization in there and could it be gold not much magnetism magnetism on that one so we'll move on to the next one interesting rock here so we can get so there it's a, a bit of a slag out of a furnace blast furnace but can you hear that now that's something more than uh, iron which you never know Anyway, I'll move on to my next step. Okay, I have uh, made up a little bit of a gadget that I put into the vise. And what it does is uh, um, I can crush the rock down to a size and, you know, saves a little bit of energy up and down uh, in the, uh, uh, what's the name outside there? where we move on to later after we've done this so what I'll do is I put it into the vise okay and then what I had to do then is just put it into here put a rock into it like that put my hand over it make sure I don't catch my fingers and then I simple as that just release a little bit and then work it down with my hand. Simple little contraption. And it works efficiently enough. You've got to put your hand on it, stops the pieces flying up. And we'll just go away like that until we get it all down there. Of course, when I loosen off the vice like that, it, it does um, shuffle down a little bit. Then I just keep on making it smaller, which doesn't take long. Then we just, first of all, I bring it all up like this. Okay, and I'll have a look at it. Have a look at it. And uh, take out the big pieces. Put the rest into there. siphon and slip it back in there and make the size smaller remembering to put your hand over the top I could spend probably about, I think they're about $1,500, $2,000, sorry, and get a proper crusher, but uh, hey man, I'm not going to do that. We'll get a few hot rocks over a few weeks, we're definitely going to just crush them up in our backyard and see if there's any gold in there. You don't have to do it, most people just throw it away. But me, I'll just, uh, I'm always inquisitive to see if there is any gold in it. I'll refine my uh, expertise with these hot rocks. I will look at them carefully. I will analyse them in future. Uh, because it feels to me that uh, it's only barely got a sound. 
it's barely going to have anything in it because as we know gold has a very particular sound about it and these are very mild sounds when they get a little bit exciting this gives me an idea to go and do something so this is a quick rough setup in the backyard and uh, as I say this saves heaps of time believe it or not than using a dolly pot and trying to break up the rocks when you go down a smaller size very easy to handle and you can even go to extremes and even the smaller pieces pieces that you throw on the ground most of these rocks are ironstone because naturally that's the one that's going to give you magnetism and all this so when you're out in the field you get those magnetic pockets you know you're dealing with very high concentrated fine uh, mineralized material and when you start digging it all of a sudden disappears that's a bit of a heartache some of the holes I dug were down about 18 inches I hit the bedrock and bang made the areas where we were it was about uh, 12 inches Uh, 12 inches to the to the rear sorry to the uh, bedrock which was quite interesting these things in the field those handheld detectors um, we use a few times to find a bit of lead <laughs> or a bit of lead that's it you can't pick up lead with a magnet deepest lead I found I think it was six inches under the ground and I'm I just don't know how we got the. I'll do a bit of concentration on this. I know I'll be lucky if I get any gold out of this, but you gotta try. Before we go, I'll get me handheld and uh, just give you an idea what's going on in this pile of uh, broken down. Uh -huh. Fool juice. That was over the vice. See, who watch? Ha uh ha, -huh, you think it's gold there? No, she's right. Then I get it too close to my neck and you'll get another sound. That's getting the neck lace. So it's got a sound there. But uh, let's go and find out how big the gold is in there. A reason that there could be mud on my face or egg on my face is I upload each episode or part onto YouTube without knowing what the end result will be gold or no gold so to keep watching the episodes as they appear on YouTube please subscribe and give me the thumbs up and don't be shy about what you ask 
or comment. Those who give me the thumbs down don't have to watch, just go somewhere else and carry on your dominion. But thanks for watching. Look for the next part two or episode two coming up shortly. I'll keep them short and sweet so you can follow them and don't get bored. Cheers everybody.